Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Uh, you wrote and you talked for years about Hezbollah activities in Latin America, uh, activities tied to money laundering and drug smuggling. How well known is Hezbollah as a drug smuggler and cartel in Latin America? Hezbollah has built a reputation for being both a service provider uh, for the purpose of money laundering of criminal gangs and, and criminal syndicates, uh, but also as a client of these cartels because it also buys cocaine from them or it takes cocaine as payment for its commission and it then has the networks to distribute it. It, is, it has built such a um, high and widespread reputation that in a recent sting operation by DEA in Mexico mm -hmm. against cartels exporting methamphetamines to the United States, DEA used um, an informant who posed as a member of Hezbollah who could launder money and he was the, the the persona of a Hezbollah trafficker and money launderer was so credible to his cartel counterparts that not only did they did a, did they do a deal in methamphetamines with him but they also asked him to sell them weapons so clearly Hezbollah has built a worldwide reputation uh, in this uh, sector it does so because the increasing financial requirements of its operations um, cannot be covered fully by Iran's direct cash contributions. And because Hezbollah has truly a global footprint of networks uh, embedded in many expatriate communities, it can uh, and does operate not just in Latin America, but really worldwide. They are implicated in a variety of crimes in Africa, um, in the Far East, and obviously in the Middle East, uh, and increasingly also they have networks in Europe. So they are really a global criminal syndicate, and whatever criminal activity can generate revenue, they sooner or later turn up and get involved. Yeah, recently the European authorities uh, caught many people tied to Hezbollah who are doing activities also related to money laundering and the drug smuggling. And recently we saw it happening again in Saudi Arabia. Do you think uh, Hezbollah capabilities are growing or there is enough regulations now that can trace these activities? You know, the pandemic has certainly posed an initial challenge to any criminal activity that is global because commerce was down. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that on the, up, on the upside for the criminals, uh, the current uh, global situation has also created uh, many opportunities increasingly to get involved in criminal activities and also make money out of new business opportunities. Hezbollah uh, financiers in Latin America, for example, have been involved in the trade uh, and money laundering through personal protection equipment, for example. Um, but when it comes to the recent seizures uh, of methamphetamines in Saudi Arabia, um, it's clear that the, the methamphetamine problem in the Middle East which is starting also to spread out uh, beyond the region. There were important seizures uh, from Syria of methamphetamines uh, in Italy uh, and in Greece uh, last year. Uh, clearly that is connected to the Assad regime, with Hezbollah very likely playing the middleman in terms of providing the logistics and the financial services to launder the money back uh, to the coffers of the criminals. Methamphetamines. Um, are fairly easy to produce if you have the basic pharmaceutical infrastructure, which most countries do mm -hmm. have these days. The, um, the precursors are accessible. Uh, the know-how is not uh, you know, very complicated. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. And the cost of methamphetamines, of course, for the market is significantly lower than, say, other recreational drugs such as cocaine. Now cocaine obviously is a big component of Hezbollah's activities in Latin America because that is the main hub of production. 90% uh, of world cocaine 
comes from the Andean plateaus of South America. But methamphetamines can be produced anywhere in a lab. And so that's why the Assad regime has invested significantly in that type of activity and Hezbollah is facilitating through exports and laundering activities. How much money do you think Assad regime is making out of this? And where is this money going? You know, the Syrian people are starving today. It's very horrible how much struggling there is in Syria and Assad regime is throwing it all on the American sanctions. Where is all these resources going? Does it belong to like people, certain people in the regime? Well, so the, the Assad regime, very much like other uh, uh, criminal uh, uh, rogue state actors, such as the Venezuelan regime, uh, op they all operate uh, not by directly getting involved in these activities. This is not a state-run business. And these are businesses run by business people who are linked to the regime, so they get access to the technology, to the infrastructure, to the raw materials. They engage in production and they pay a percentage usually. Um, they pay bribes, they pay percentages to ensure that their business uh, is left untouched. So both sides benefit. The business people involved make money. The regime skims money from these activities. And so while the economy is crumbling, um, the regime sustains itself because it has um, under the rug sources of, uh, of financing. Where does the money go? Hard to tell. It very likely goes to enrich the entire state machine that facilitates the activity. So again, while you know, the economy is doing very badly and people have difficulty making ends meet, the people who are connected to the regime and to these types of activities have you know, access to luxury goods, to consum consumer goods, to imported goods from the West and so on. And that's, that's how it works. Do you think uh, the latest thing that happened when uh, they sent this Kiptagon uh, drugs to Saudi Arabia was a political move, ideological move, or it was just one of their activities to sell uh, drugs to any country? I don't think there is uh, a primary political reasoning behind these uh, shipments. There is a wide market uh, for these drugs. I mean, they did not send 16 tons of pills last June to Italy because of any specific political reason. It was just a deal with a local criminal syndicate that had the means to then distribute the pills uh, continent-wide on the European markets. It's just very lucrative and that's, that's what drives them. The Gulf is an attractive market for these type of drugs and again, the pills uh, are infinitely cheaper than other alternatives such as cocaine, which comes, as I explained, from all the way from Latin America, so it's a lot more complicated. The production is local in the Middle East right now. Do you think any of uh, Hezbollah drugs is coming to the United States? It's very likely. I mean, again, the drug itself most of the time is not Hezbollah's. It is, you know, the cartels in Colombia and their, their partners in Central America that ensure the transfers of drugs to U.S. markets. Um, but in many cases, the revenue is then delivered to Hezbollah financiers, facilitators, middlemen who launder the money on behalf of the cartel. That is the connection. And a lot of the money laundering that they're doing is happening in the United States. Uh, you know, many people here in Washington, D.C. accuse the Democrats that they did not focus on this activity uh, of Hezbollah because they don't want to complicate the issues with Iran due to political reasons, because they wanted the deal in 2015 and today they want another deal or the same deal. Do you think this is something that's happening? Look, I think we have significant evidence to show that the Obama administration, in you know, beginning in 2012, um, started scaling down and pushing back on its own operations against Hezbollah's money laundering and drug trafficking in, in mainly in Latin America, but also West Africa and Europe. Uh, and clearly, there was a political reason for that. It was a quid pro quo with the regime in Tehran uh, in order to achieve a nuclear deal. Uh, 
because the current democratic administration of President Biden is trying now to negotiate a return to that deal, perhaps with adjustments, there is an understandable concern that the Democrats uh, in power today may do that again. I think it remains to be seen. Uh, so far, we haven't seen any clear indication that this specific issue is part of the negotiation. So we will just have to wait and see. Do you expect this issue and other issues like um, Iran militias activities in the region, in Yemen, in Syria, will be part of the talks with Iran under Biden administration? Again, it's hard to say at this point. I think that right now the negotiations are focusing on the much narrower issue of how to return, for how the United States returns to the nuclear deal in exchange for what on Iran's part. It may be, and certainly it is the hope of regional allies of the United States, that the Biden administration will not repeat the Obama administration's mistake of leaving Iran's nefarious activities, such as support for terrorist groups and, and uh, uh, Shia militias in the region, um, the ballistic missile program, um, gross human rights violations, involvement in crime, all of these things, should not be left off the table. Unless those issues are addressed, we are not going to uh, address the broader Middle, uh, Middle East uh, regional instability of which Iran is a major contributor.